This is an English guide to learn Swedish. Hello and welcome back. In this episode we will talk about genitive. Out of the inflection of nouns that we've looked at so far, it's absolutely the simplest. But, before I tell you exactly how simple it is, I'm going to make it more complicated. Swedish is a very old language, and in Old Swedish, the kind of Swedish that we talked some 500 to 700 years ago, there were five suffixes for genitive. S, U, O, E, and A. Luckily, we don't do this anymore, but some of these inflected words and phrases live on. I won't go through them because they are frankly quite few, and I think that you deserve an episode which is simple and straightforward. Today, we only use S to denote genitive, and it doesn't matter if the noun is definite or indefinite, if it's plural or singular, you just stick it on the back of the word. However, if the word ends with S, X, or Z, you don't add any S. One example of this is the word sax. En sax. En sax. However, since the indefinite plural form of scissors is saxar, the genitive form of this becomes saxar, since the word no longer ends with an X. Let's look at an example. Here are all the inflection for the word penna. To inflect these to genitive, simply add s to the end of each word. En pennas, flera pennors. Den pennans, de pennornas. The genitive s also helps us explain some of the mysterious s's that show up in compound words. For example, the word bordsben is a compound word of the words bord and ben. Where did the s come from? Well, now it's quite easy to see that the s is there to denote that the table is possessive of the legs. It's the legs of the table. Bordsben. As in English, it's possible to convolute meanings as to move the genitive s far from the head noun. For example, the sentence Maria of Österrike var kungen of Spanien och en massa andra ställen genom hela Europas dotter. Which means Maria of Austria was the king of Spain and a bunch of other places throughout the entirety of Europe's daughter. I actually think I should keep this episode this short. If people run into a lot of confusion with a Swedish genitive, for example when the genitive S is not used, then I make another video going more in depth that you should be able to find easily from this video. Next time I will do some kind of noun finale similar to the one on pronunciation. That was all for this time. Thank you for watching.